Okay, in this video tonight, we're going to take apart this new XTR DI2 shifter and we're going to look at how much shifting pressure it takes to work the shifter out of the box and then we're going to take it apart, change some of the springs to make it a little bit easier to shift. What I realized when I bought this shifter is that the amount of uh, pressure you have to in to engage the clicks in the shifter is pretty significant. So I put it on a scale and to shift the bottom shifter to the first click is 1100 to 1200 grams of pressure. And then for the second click it's 1500 to 1700 grams of pressure to click this shifter. For the one on top which actually moves both shifters it's even more. So it's 16 to 1700 grams to shift it the first click and then the second click takes 2700 to 2800 grams of pressure which is like six pounds of pressure or I'll put it on this pole right here just to kind of simulate a uh, handlebar I'm just going to tighten this down so that, that's the amount of pressure it takes it takes significant pressure it's, I'd say it's close to a mechanical shifter the reason I'm wanting to use the DI2 shifters because I injured my thumb and I was hoping that the shifting pressure would be much less. So I'm going to take it apart. We're going to show you the springs that are inside it that um, that make it hard to shift. There's actually two torsion springs and two extension springs in it and I'll show you how I brought the shifting pressure down from 2800 grams of pressure down to uh, about 300 grams of pressure which is significantly less. You still get the tactile feel of the first and second click, but um, it's significantly less pressure. So um, let's take it apart and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, first of all, to take the unit apart, there's two screws back here, which are some sort of proprietary non, they're like, they look like a Phillips, but they're not. But I just used a straight slot screwdriver bit and it fits in there well enough to back up these screws that are just screwed into plastic so they don't take a lot of pressure. So you just pop out those two screws right there, right there, so we have those. And then um, there's a little plastic cap right here. This just pops off. As you can see, this kind of just gets under here and that just pops off. Just a little pull that pops off. It has these two little retaining clips here and a retaining clip here that, that helps keep that on there. The other thing we need to do is to flip it over and there's this ring right here that has to come off to be able to pull the plastic cover off. As you can see I scratched it up a little bit um, while I was doing it. I just took a pair of forceps and stuck it into those slots right there. And just with some significant pressure backwards it it will turn. And that just backs off like that. Removes the plastic cover. So what we're left here, and what we have here is two extension springs. We have the first small extension spring and then the large extension spring. So the, the first tension spring here, that stretches when you're using the bottom clicker and it stretches that and it brings it to the click. The second spring, this works to give a little extra pressure on the on this on this clicker right here. So it's two springs that provide um, pressure to make it make it click. Now the clicking mechanism is actually here. So you can see on the back, as it actuates, this little device right here comes in contact with this device right here. So you'll see when I click it, you'll see it click, click, and then and it's got a little bit harder ramp on the second one and it's got to click over the second one. So it goes like that. So it's click, 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 like that. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I'm going to zoom that in just a little bit more. A little bit too much. Okay, let's try that here. So it's click, click, and it's a little bit harder pressure on the second click. That gives you that tactile feedback that you're going for for two shifts at once instead of just one one shift. Okay, so so that's how how it clicks. Now let me back it up a little bit here again. What I'll show you is these are two torsion springs here. That provide that click. 
There's a little torsion spring here that provides pressure to this little uh, clicker right here. And there's a torsion spring in here that provides significant pressure that makes this whole mechanism go up and down like this. The smaller spring just makes this go like that, see? Okay, so to reduce the, to, the total pressure to activate the device, I have to replace these torsion spring, this torsion spring, this small extension spring, and this extension spring. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and show you how I get those extension springs off. First of all, we're going to just pull these, these extension springs, which, which come out pretty easily. Like that. Okay, let's pull that one off. And then the other extension spring here, which we're going to just take a screwdriver in there and pop that off. Okay, pop that off. Okay, so I got the two extension springs. Once I have the two extension springs off, I can just pull the two sliders apart. So that comes with the uh, back switch. There's a little ring that goes with that. And there's the front switch right here. And this just slides right out of there like that. That's just the part that holds it onto the handlebar. Okay, so that leaves us with this piece right here, which is what we're going to have to use to um, change these two clicking devices right here. So like I said, there's this first clicker right here, which provides back pressure right here. And then there's this second torsion spring on top right here that provides pressure for it to move like this. Okay, so there's a couple little eclipses in here. Let's zoom in just a little bit more here. There's two little E-clips right here. There's first E-clip here. Take a screwdriver and pop that off. The second E-clip here. Pop that off here. Okay, so we're going to just take these pins. We're just going to push the pins. Push the pins in. This disassembles the device. Push this pin in here. And that leaves out like that. Okay, so what you've got left over is these pieces. This is the bigger tension spring that goes on top. Here's the smaller torsion spring that goes on the bottom that fits in here. So those are your pieces. This is the, the fatter pin that goes on top. This is the, the thinner pin that goes on the bottom. And then um, this piece right here fits in this little slot right here. So I'll just show you how I put it back together with a couple of springs that I made. And these are the springs that we're going to use to replace. And I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference. There's the biggest torsion spring. And I handmade a much uh, thinner wire torsion spring. And then we've got the, this torsion spring right here, which is the stock one. Then I hand wound a smaller torsion spring with basically it's just with smaller wire that makes the torsion springs um, I have a hard time getting this part with smaller wire that makes the torsion springs a little easier to use so there's my torsion spring the smaller one and then for the extension springs I've got these two extension springs I'm replacing this extension spring here with this one which opens up nice and easy this one I can't even pull apart with my fingers I mean, it's, it's that hard. Okay, that's that's that replacement. And then I'm replacing this one, which I can just barely pull apart with my fingers, with this one, which pulls apart pretty easily. Okay, and I bought um, these extension springs in a little kit that I got from Harbor Freight Tools. These ones I had to wind myself, which um, if anybody wants to see that, maybe I'll make a separate video on how to wind um, your own spring. So how I wound this spring and how I wound that spring and got the tension exactly where I wanted to get it. So from here I'm just going to put it all back together again. Okay now we're going to assemble this back together again. So the first thing I need to do is start with this pin right here and we're going to put our spring, my new spring, which is the thinner spring. We're going to slot that right back into here. Put that right back in that hole right there that holds the pin. 
We're going to take this device, a little clicker, and we're going to put the pin in there like this so that it, when it, oops, when it pulls it, it's like that. And that's the way we want to have it right there in that orientation right there. See that? Okay. So that's kind of springing like that now. That's a lot less pressure than with the original spring. Okay, so now we're gonna put the the other clicker back in this thing and we're gonna put this spring in here. And this one goes in in this orientation here. So it kind of goes in. Make sure I don't have this backwards. Goes in with that pin underneath. Said you really need small hands to be able to do this stuff. Okay, so that goes in there like that. So we start this pin to hold it in place. Okay, then we got to come along with this guy. We're gonna slide that in here. Click that in place there. Now you can see that that. Not only does that move nice and easy, but this piece springs nice and easy now too. So you got the two motions nice and easy that way, nice and easy this way. Just enough pressure to make it click, but not so much pressure that it's um, not going to give you the feedback that you need while you're clicking the shifter. Okay, so the next thing we have to do put Eclipse back on here and on here. And so what we'll do is we'll just grab these our fingers here, put the E-clip in place, a little pair of forceps here. Okay, so the Eclipse are back in there. And that mechanism's all back together again. So we're gonna put this back in place here. It goes like that. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is put this little clip, which goes down in this orientation, back on this side. This goes back on like this. Okay, so we got our shifters back together there. Now we all have to do now is put in the two extension springs. Okay, now we're just going to attach the two extension springs. We're going to take this extension spring, which is clicked on here, and hook it on this little hook right here. Should be able to pop on pretty easily right there. And then we have to connect this one on this little hook. I'm using a little bit smaller spring that came in the kit originally, so it's a little hard to get it on that little Get it on that little hook, but this takes a little bit of pressure right there. Okay, good. So that's back back in there now. Now we just got to put it back in the housing. This goes in here like this. You just line up these two little holes right here with the two holes in the inside. It clicks up right there. We'll flip it over. We're going to put our retention ring back on. Goes on there clockwise. And just spin that back on. I'm just going to use my little makeshift device here and get that on there nice and tight. Okay, we flip it over. We just got to put our cover back on now. And it just pops in place. Make sure you're not breaking as you put it in there. You take your two retaining screws and put those back in. And we're going to screw those down. Okay, good. So now the, the shifting pressure is significantly less. So now I can just, one finger, I can use my pinky and just hardly any pressure. But you still get that one, two click feedback. 
it's a little bit harder on this one, so if you're, you can do it by feel that you know you're pushing that shifter versus putting pushing the, uh, the bottom shifter. Okay, well I'm just going to show you briefly how I um, tested how much pressure it took to activate uh, each of the switches. So I'll put this back on my little makeshift um, handlebar here. Screw that down like that. We got our shifter like this. And all I did was take my scale, put it on the shifter. See, you can see it takes, let's see, uh, let's see, 200 grams. About 180 and then 280 for the second shift. Quite a bit less. It took 2800 to get the second shift on the second shifter. And I do that with this shifter now, doing that, so it's shift clicking both levers. Here. So quite a bit less, less than 500 grams on the double shifter, where it took 2,800 grams on that on this shifter right here. Um, so now you still get the feedback, and I think that it won't activate on its own through bumps and things like that. But there's still some pressure; it still has to activate through the clicks. But now you won't wear your thumb out um, using the shifter. Anyways, that's my video on how I changed the springs to make uh, my XDR DR, DI2 shifter shift with a lot less shifting pressure.